What's up guys, Eric here, and in this video we're going to be talking about The Flash Season 9, Episode 9, otherwise titled, It's My Party and I'll Die If I Want To. So careful for spoilers if you're not caught up with The Flash this season. You've been warned, let's get into it. So I think it goes without saying, I'm going to say it anyway, that this was probably the most anticipated episode of the season. We're nine episodes in, and the first eight episodes of this season arguably have been some of the worst Flash TV we've ever had. Probably the worst first eight episodes of any Arrowverse show, maybe even a DC TV show in general. It's not been good. We've all been questioning whether or not Eric Wallace is doing the best he can. We've always questioned why he picked this episode over that. Why was this bottle episode done this way? Why these characters were chosen for this? But we knew going into this episode, we were going to be getting some exciting stuff. And we had hoped that those exciting things would lead into the beginning of the really good stuff for the end of The Flash as a series. And I'm happy to say that I was pretty much overjoyed with almost everything that happened in this episode of The Flash. I think they really did nail everything that we could have wanted as fans. I didn't take any notes for this one because I really just wanted to sit down and enjoy the episode. So if I miss something here, you can leave it down in the comments below. Also, we're gonna talk more in detail about this on Saturday at the after party. So by then I will have some notes and we'll go over some of those finer details. We're gonna start out with all the stuff I loved and then I'll save my criticisms for the end. I'll even score it before I get to my criticisms because I wanna give people the opportunity to step away if you don't wanna hear like any of the, you know, I guess negatives that I have to say about the episode. So first of all, it was an absolute joy seeing Stephen Amell and Grant Gustin sharing scenes together again. The Leanne Yu scene, once Oliver was there and Barry was there and they were talking again, I, I could have watched that interaction for the whole hour. It was so good to see the two of them back together again. And it almost feels like Oliver never left. It's been a few years, but honestly, it felt like Oliver had never left. And I just love the chemistry between the two of them. It was a like a, a connection in the Arrowverse that we've just been missing for so long. And you could feel it return the minute those two were on screen together. And then we get that throughout the remainder of the episode. That comes around the 20-ish minute mark, um, I think, on TV, which would have probably been around the 15-minute mark if you're watching it on streaming. But once that happens, once that moment happens, the, the episode just sort of barrels through this fantastic story that we're being told with blood work and the multiverse and all of these things. We also have Kid Flash back again and Wally West with Keenan Lonsdale giving us a, a fantastic performance. We're dealing with something with Kid Flash that has never been addressed on the show before. And they took something that we knew as viewers, something that we complained about quite often, and they, they were able to address it in this episode and resolve it in this episode. And that is the fact that a lot of us feel as if Wally, Kid Flash, was kind of underutilized on the show forgotten, mistreated as a character. And to see that addressed in the show and to have Wally have that as the catalyst for why he agrees with what blood work is offering him and then watching him come out of that at the end because Barry lets him know that, hey, you know, you do matter and we do care and love you, care about you and love you. And all of that made so much sense to me. So hats off to them for giving us a fantastic storyline for Kid Flash in one episode, which wasn't even primarily about Kid Flash, but they made all of those moments matter, and I truly did appreciate that in the episode. Let's talk a little bit about Bloodwork. So Bloodwork was the main antagonist of the episode. Bloodwork is arguably one of the best, if not the best, graphic novels that Eric Wallace has ever done on The Flash. It's probably one that people will remember simply because it was done so well. And it was good to see Bloodwork back again, and we got to see him doing things that we saw him do during his graphic novel, as well as the big CGI creature that is Bloodwork, which brought back a lot of memories of what I thought was, again, one of the best graphic novels of the series. Uh, Ramsey, in this, in this particular episode, I think did just enough to make us understand of what, you know, what kind of threat he could be to the multiverse, as well as also being a threat to all of our characters there in the scenes made it very personal but also at a very large scale it's very hard to do and they managed to do that and so again absolutely enjoyed that we got something else that i didn't think about until most recently and that is 
Diggle having an opportunity to say goodbye to Oliver. This is something that we did not get when Oliver left us during crisis. Diggle did not have the opportunity to really talk to Oliver. And I would be lying if I didn't say I got emotional seeing the two of them get an opportunity. And when Oliver tried to explain why all of this was going on and Diggle just said, it doesn't matter. And it didn't really, ultimately. So seeing the two of them together was absolutely fantastic. And I really loved that part of the episode as well. Now, in terms of like an overall episode of The Flash, the way we started it out to get to where we were, I think this is easily the best episode of the season. Hands down, no question. It's probably one of the best episodes of The Flash we've ever had. So is this the, the, the renaissance of The Flash in season nine? Are we going to be heading into some fantastic episodes in the back end? You know, I guess we'll have to wait and see all of that uh, when we get there. So what about Oliver? How did we get to the Green Arrow character from the Spectre? So we had the Spectre existing in the afterlife who is only allowed to interact with the world when the multiverse is in danger. And this is when we learn that the multiverse is back and it's been there all along and it's still growing, which leads to some explanations about Red Death, which we'll talk about in my criticism portion of this review. We also get a few answers about Keon because in this episode, she's able to use elemental powers again. And Oliver confirms that there is something to do with this connection to nature. I've been saying for a while that I believe Keon is just a version of the life force, which would be mother nature type character. And I still stand by that. I think that is a very likely thing that's going to be happening with her, uh, you know, uh, through her process in these last few episodes um, of the show. We also find out that uh, that Iris is uh, being is is getting a, the benefit of having that speedster physiology inside of her uh, with the with the baby's baby, um, and so that's giving her the ability to do things that she wouldn't normally do, similar to how Cecile was gifted powers uh, while she was pregnant. So meta baby equals some sort of meta powers. We had some stuff with Allegra and Chester, which I think was probably one of the weaker aspects of the episode, but the good news is it wasn't a full-fledged, like, B-plot. It was a portion of the episode, but it didn't take up a lot of the episode, and they were going to give Allegra one of those uh, face-scrambling devices that she could able to use. I thought it was going to be a costume, but it wasn't. I believe it was just the face scrambling thing. I'll have to look back at the episode again. I, I believe that's what it was, which is weird because Allegra, when she's using her powers, doesn't look human anyway. So it's like, she's kind of hiding who she is to begin with whenever she's using her powers, but neither here nor there, I guess. Um, but outside of that, I think Chester was really strong in the episode and I thought it was a lot of fun. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about before I give my score and give my, some of my criticisms about it is I did not remember or appreciate just how good i guess the green arrow fight scenes were when we got the battle between the zombified blood work police officers and green arrow oliver queen as i was watching that i'm like this is what i've been missing this is one of the things that i was missing a little bit and having it come back and be such a big part of the show in this episode i mean they gave a full-on fight scene I have to give Eric Wallace credit on that. It looked spectacular. It looked like it was ripped straight out of a Green Arrow or an Arrow episode. So I really enjoyed that as well. And so it was good to see that once again. I would have been really upset if we would have had like no Green Arrow fighting whatsoever, um, you know, in the episode. I probably would have been really angry about that. So for me, absolutely fantastic. So I'm going to give this episode an almost perfect score. And you'll understand why in a second. Uh, I'm going to give this episode a 9.5 out of 10. I took a half point off because I have a few issues with the episode, but did not take away from my overall enjoyment this week of The Flash because I'm so happy that it feels like we're back with something really good. And I hope that this continues, this momentum continues for the remainder of this final season. Uh, Eric Wallace definitely did something really good here. And I'm kind of bummed that it took nine episodes to get to this point. Not going to lie, kind of bummed about that. So let me know what your scores are down in the comments below and your thoughts on this episode and uh, all of that. Okay, let's talk about a little bit of my criticism of the episode. Just some minor stuff. First and foremost, I think the beginning of the episode was a little sluggish for me. 
it felt like it took a minute to really get going up until the point where Wally and Barry got into the fight and Barry was killed. That up until that point, it was a little slow for me. I'm not going to lie, but I still enjoyed it. It was just a little bit slow in that moment. And also I do feel like the stuff with Chester and Allegra, even though it didn't take up a lot of the episode, I just wasn't totally vibing with that stuff, but it wasn't a lot. So not a ton to complain about in terms of that. Okay. Let's talk about something that didn't really affect my score of the episode, but it bothers me because of the red death graphic novel. So one of the things they did is Oliver explained the return of the multiverse, which I'm happy about. I absolutely appreciated that. I'm glad the multiverse was explained because let's be honest, alternate timelines jumping from timeline to timeline was a bad idea. I don't think anybody liked that. It was really bad. It didn't make a lot of sense. And they sort of corrected it here by Oliver giving Barry an explanation for what was going on. Herein lies my problem with that. I believe it was Earth 4125. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it was 4125 was the Earth that this Red Death character was from. How in the world would the cosmic treadmill have gotten her back to her earth? And how was she doing this and exploring these other places using a suit that's not the real speed force? But yet Wally, somebody who is a true speed through, understands the speed force probably better than Barry does, was not able to determine that these other places were not timelines. They were actually other Earths. How is that possible? I just don't find that to be a adequate explanation for how Red Death was able to come from her Earth to Earth Prime and have all of this knowledge of other timelines with an artificial Speed Force suit that she also needed a cosmic treadmill to do things. Like that storyline, just even looking at it from that perspective, it doesn't make any sense if it is the multiverse. So for me, this makes the Red Death storyline even worse, in my opinion. Does it fix the issue with multiple timelines? Yes, that's great. Does it complicate how she traveled from one Earth to another? Yes. Does it complicate how she knew she could get back to her Earth? Yes, because all of that knowledge would require her to understand what she was actually doing. And if that was the case, then the cosmic treadmill would not have sent her back to her earth as far as I know. And even so she didn't, that's not what she was trying to do. She was trying to get back to a different timeline. So I don't know. I feel like that complicates things a little bit more because in order for her to know how to do it, she would have to understand that it's another earth and she didn't, she thought it was another timeline as well, but that has nothing to do with this episode. So I didn't remove any points for that. That's just one of my issues with it. So for me, I reduce points for the slowness of the beginning of the episode, and that's why I gave it a 9.5. Otherwise, though, I absolutely loved it. I think, again, this is clearly the best episode of the season and probably one of the best episodes of The Flash, nostalgia-wise, fight scene-wise, special effects-wise. I think there's just so many good things about it that it's hard to walk away from this and deny that this episode was just that strong. So for me, 9.5 out of 10, almost a perfect score, but I believe there could be a perfect 10 episode in these last few episodes of The Flash. So for me, I feel like it's a really good start to goodbye to The Flash. So that's my final thoughts on this, but thank you guys so much for watching this video. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this episode down in the comments below. Give me your score. Leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it and make sure you subscribe if you're new to my channel or if you're coming back for the second, third, fourth, fifth time. Definitely helps my channel grow and I would love to have more conversation about The Flash with you guys. And uh, make sure you turn on notifications and so you know when we're live over here. We're gonna be live on Saturday with the after party. We're gonna talk about this in even more detail. All right, thanks so much. Take care, everybody, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.